Good morning. So for over 25 years, I worked for my family's meat business. And over the years, I, I saw pandemics come and go and livestock pandemics. And the two that stick in my mind are, were Mad Cow and E. coli. And the way I remember the Mad Cow is there was a an event or like a, 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 something happened in the UK and, and there was a media picked up on it, big story, made the news and, and lots of fear and the authorities um, sprang into action and, and I heard that all the animals were rounded up and, and put in one area and then I, I also heard that this uh, sp spread the, the outbreak and, and so like all of them tested positive or whatever and then they, the decision was to kill them all and and that's the way i remember it and in the industry there's terms like death loss and condemned and and uh so and then that one eventually made it to the u.s and there was a case and again you know big media thing and and often the way a lot of the the cafo the confined animal feeding operation works is there'll be you know the margins are really small as far as profit goes and and so certain cuts like steaks and and hamburgers and stuff will sell whereas a lot of the other stuff gets put in the freezer or, or cold storage somewhere and then they save it until they get a, a large you know like forty thousand pounds of it and then it goes in a container and it's shipped exported somewhere somewhere else in the world or someplace where that particular cut of the animal is is um more appealing or it's in the culture to eat that or, or people just like the taste or whatever and and so that's kind of how it works and so all of a sudden there's a case in the u.s and then canada too and and all of a sudden the borders close and so people that make a living exporting this stuff or they need that that's a huge part of survival is being able to sell the entire animal all of a sudden they're freaking out and they can't they can't sell this stuff because it, it it's labeled as as tainted and you can't do anything and and same kind of thing that, you know, the, the, the pattern is kind of an event happens, there's a media storm, then the, the authorities, the USDA or whoever the regulating body, you know, comes in, they, they pass more regulations, there's maybe an increase in the, the number of inspectors or even a whole new field of inspectors comes and then um, uh, more controls and, and, and usually on the end of the, the business, the meat people, the, the, it, it adds up to more uh, red tape or just paperwork. O often there's not a significant change in the way things are done. It's, it's more a, a um, like procedural kind of, uh, you know, shifting the deck chairs on the Titanic for, to use a blunt analogy, that kind of thing, where there's not a systematic change that, that, that changes things. And then so a number of years go by and then E. coli becomes the big thing. There's a, there like a fast food restaurant that had some burgers, some kids got sick. I even think some kids died, you know, like sad, tragic, like, you know, like awful like that. I can't imagine, but you know, like it happens. And then the, the you know, the big media thing, the, the whole restaurant chain gets shut down. The supplier, there's like a million pounds that, that was in question and that all gets, tossed and recalled and thrown away and, and then there's more regulations and now now there's more procedures and there's a whole there, there's this thing called HACCP that was passed at one point it was like a thousand pages of new regulations and it gets brought in and there was this whole training thing to like teach the the people in the industry how to implement all this new stuff and then there's a whole new branch of inspectors and inspections and 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 again no systematic changes in how things are done. More of a, a procedural, like like testing the the end product was the thing. Like you know, you can do whatever you want input wise as long as it tests and pass the test, it's good to go. It you know it does it could be raised horribly and in cruel conditions, fed all kinds of garbage, but as long as it passes this test that says it's safe, it doesn't have whatever it is, the E. coli, mad cow, whatever, it's, it's fit for people to eat. That's, that's the, the, that was the way the system works. And as a, a small business and, and talking to other small businesses over the years, what would happen when a, when a bunch of new um, 
regulations, requirements, uh, you know, uh, lots of paperwork, or even have to hire sometimes staff to keep up with the 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 um, the documentation, as they call it. Like if it if it's not documented, it didn't happen. That that's kind of the way it works. Even if you did it, no, nope, you didn't document it. Didn't happen. And so a lot of the the real small businesses, they they just couldn't. It was so overwhelming for them. They just couldn't. They couldn't do it. It was they gave up. They either shut down or they were shut down because they they kept missing the paperwork. Even if they were doing things the way they're supposed to do, they they couldn't document it. They just didn't have either the wherewithal or the or the people power, or it was just too complex for them. And so they they would get driven out or voluntarily have to quit because it was just too much for them. Or it reminds me of that. There's that. Terry Gillum movie, Brazil, where Robert De Niro character comes in and, and says, you know, why are you doing this? He says, oh, I just can't stand the paperwork. And, you know, that was the gag. And, and so a number of years go by and meat becomes popular again. There were celebrity chefs and then the celebrity butchers and then uh, went from like nourishing traditions to paleo to hunter gatherer, pasture raised. All these things become in vogue and popular. So I started learning, like everyone else, how animals in the wild eat and how they're raised, and 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 these ideas like permaculture, ranching and farming, where where we look at how an animal is designed to live, what they're designed to eat, and then so there was some small and even some big ranches started doing it this way, and what I heard from them, and what I've learned is is that they their animals either never get sick or rarely get sick so for me that was like huge super eye-opening i was like wow like the problem isn't on the end of like we need to test everything the problem is on the the input the way where the system is broken you know no amount of testing is going to fix that no amount of new regulations and more inspectors is going to fix that we're we're raising animals in a way that's that's dysfunctional and causing the diseases you know all it was, so it's kind of really frustrating to to learn this and to and to really take it in and believe it and and see it and and then change my diet myself and start eating that way and then and then getting a lot of pushback from people who are kind of set in their ways or who don't believe in it or they, they think it's bs you know like uh, you know corn fed is grain fed just as good as as grass fed or or you can still keep them in these horrible uh, uh, pens and and conditions and just just put grass in the trough and it's just the same as you know grass fed um, you know that kind of stuff and 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 that just uh, coming up against the belief system and not to fault anyone for for believing that or, or living that way I mean I I thought that for decades it's it's just the it's it's the challenge of overcoming that that belief system and so along comes 2020 and, and I hear words like pandemic thrown around and pathogen and these kinds of things. And these words sound very familiar for me. You know, I, I saw it for decades in the meat industry. And, and it was almost like I saw a familiar script, that I, a movie that I'd seen before. And, and a lot of the same things were, were being mentioned, like, uh, you know, like disease and testing and, and quarantines and these kind of things. And I heard very little, probably nothing about, about health and, and how on the the that healthy people, if we live a healthy way, we don't get sick either. We're, we're no different from the animals, that if, if we raise the animals in a right way, they don't get sick, and it's the same with humans. And, and so it's super frustrating to, to like see this whole thing playing out, and, and all the talk is about testing and, and control and, and, and uh, forcing people to, to uh, do things that they don't believe in or it doesn't make sense but not on like how are we going to change systematically so that we're all healthier or, or what does human health look like and how do we move in that direction and i even looked up the word pandemic and and it's a vague definition it the word significant in there and then i look up significant what does that mean and it, it means like a, something changes enough that it's large and, and noticeable i think was the exact definition and so i, I looked at the numbers for for COVID and, and, and um, I didn't see significant, you know, it, it, the number that, that I saw when I looked like six months ago was the same as the previous 70 years, you know, so how is that significant, you know, and not, I'm not trying to belittle or, or, or say that anyone's death is not significant, but what I am saying is that if, if somebody tells me the waves are huge, 
and I go down to the beach and it's knee high dribblers. I'm going to be like, why did this person tell me they're huge? Like what's, why are they, why are they full of it? You know, that, it, that I'd start questioning their word. And if they're, if they're have some other thing going on or they're just, maybe they, they just can't see straight, you know, I, I would, if it, so for me, it's just been a frustrating year and, and I saw that pattern and you know, my hope is that the parallel I saw in the meat industry where we went from, you know, when I came into it, it was, it was, uh, there was this thing called steroid, you know, uh, the whole industry was about growth hormones and steroids. And they actually put these magnets in the cows. They made them swallow them and they'd go into the belly. And the idea was that the magnet would attract a barbed wire and whatever metal was in the troughs or in their horrible conditions. And, and then this would prevent the metal from, from tearing up their guts and killing them. And, and, and this was the solution that the kind of thinking that was in the industry. And I'm, you know, it's like, how about we get the metal out of the pens? We don't let the cows eat the metal. I mean, just it, kind of the insanity that can happen when we get stuck in a way of thinking. You know, so my hope is that just like the, the meat industry, they gave up the steroids and the antibiotics and the growth hormones and, and things like that and started moving towards grass fed and pasture raised and permaculture. My hope is that as humans, we can do the same thing. We can learn from that, that, that feeding ourselves and how we live and our diet and, and the way of life affects our health. And if we get back to our nature, the way we are designed to thrive, that we will thrive. So thanks for watching.